Hello. <gasps> what was that? Oh, right, it's me. Talking. I talk now. I talk for real. This is real. This is probably my first video where I'm actually talking instead of singing. Yeah, so. Now you know! Not, not, not. We're not gonna do that. But here's what we are going to do. Now that I have hit 1,000 subscriptions, that means there's 1,000 people that actually care about me. Or about a third of that count are misclickers or bots. But besides the point, now that I have reached the first milestone of my channel, or maybe not the first, but like the one that makes a difference, the one with a letter behind it. Yeah, there we go. I've decided to start a Q&A, questions and answers. I pursued it as soon as my community tab opened and told y'all to be completely honest and inquisitive. And that I also told y'all not to worry about asking personal questions, which I might regret later, but for now I'm really not regretting it. <laughs> so without further ado, let's jump right into those questions and I'll try to be as quick and not as punny as possible. Got it? Let's -a go! What inspired your persona or the drawing? Well, that depends if you're talking about my my singing monsters persona, which is a dandadu, or you're talking about my overall internet sona, which is myself, but a fawn, which is half human, half goat. And if you're talking about the latter, that is a character that I basically dreamed up on my own. Like, it was a natural recurring dream that I had, and then I just decided to make a design for it and use it as my sona because it's spiritually significant to me. I'll probably get more into that in the future. As for the Dane to do, whenever I joined My Singing Monsters Amino, my friends were basically begging me to have an OC and I pretty much randomly chose a Dane to do to represent myself in this My Singing Monsters community. <laughs> Maybe it was because I was into fashion and you know, Dane to do's are kind of into that too. And part of it was also because there are not that many masculine Dane to do's in this community, I would assume. Question, what was the first fandom you've ever gotten into? Do you regret ever going into it? What did your first experience teach you? Oh geez. Well, that depends. I Well, no, it doesn't depend. I was in the My Little Pony community. Oh my god, Treble, were you a brony? No! Do I regret it? Kind of. My first experience taught me that I should stop trying to be something I'm not. Apparently I didn't learn that lesson until four years later. If y'all really want to know more about that, then wait. <laughs> Serious. What are some pieces of advice you have when differentiating between vocals of different vocal ranges? Dumb. If you were hanging from a tree over a pool of sharks, in what octave would you scream in? <laughs> this may not be legit advice, but I believe the vocal ranges you are referring to is chest voice, head voice, and falsetto. They sound a little something like this. Chest voice, head voice, the first thing you gotta know is that those three voices are different for everybody and that it's up to you to find yours. For example, your chest voice is basically any note that gives you a rumbling sensation right there in the middle where your heart is. Your head voice can be felt right in the back of your head or neck and for most people it's more of an open air kind of sound. Some can even define this as their mix voice which is basically a mix of that resonance from your chest and head. Falsetto is the term we use for or mostly male head resonance. For women, it's a little different, but most often when you're using falsetto, you're not gonna feel any vibrating sensation whatsoever. But like, you can search any of those voices on YouTube, learn more about it, because I'm not really a music teacher. <laughs> what do you believe are the biggest challenges of creating covers? How long did it take you to find the Grove? I still don't know if I even found the grove, to be honest. First off, I believe the biggest challenge would be getting comfortable and confident behind the microphone. And that doesn't exactly mean that I'm out of my element, since I have done quite a handful of musical theater, scored a few lead roles, and did three years of all-state choir, but it just means that I am very new to the vocal recording format. And that theater and choir doesn't exactly require you to record yourself on your own. More people are brought into the picture. 
but now it's just me in this whole new world. And it's easy for y'all to notice in some of my covers, the comments that I leave, I'm kinda hard on myself. I am my worst critic, as which would be another challenge. But overall, I think a good way to overcome this challenge is to just like give myself time and experiment along the way. Nothing will probably ever be perfect, but I don't plan on giving up anytime soon. What has inspired you to do these covers of MSM? Well, originally I didn't plan on doing any MSM covers. I was just gonna do this long list of songs that I had randomly. <laughs> but ever since I joined the My Singing Monsters fandom, like I've been playing the game for seven years, but I haven't been a part of the fandom until like maybe the April before last April. <laughs> but once I saw that almost nobody on YouTube was singing these songs with professional audio, I was like, here's my chance. So my strategy from then on as being a new YouTuber, I was gonna focus on my singing monsters content as like an attention grabber. And it kind of worked. <laughs> so that now we at least have one singer in this my singing, singing. monsters community. <laughs> No offense to the 90% of artists and musical composers in this community are still awesome. If you were a sheet of paper, what origami thing would you want to be folded into? Uh... I guess the bird, because I like birds, and that's the only kind of origami I learned how to do. What inspired you to start singing and make it public, and do you want to make a full career hour of it? I do want to make a full career hour of it. Just one hour is all I need. But no, seriously, thank you. I do want to sing for most of my life. <laughs> I love doing it. It is a stress reliever for me, so I do it often when I'm cleaning, working. My Singing Monsters is actually responsible for getting me into music whenever I started playing it at age 11. After that, I joined my middle school band and started learning all I could about music. I played the bassoon, so I mean, mostly bass music. <laughs> but once I got into high school, I decided to take choir instead of band because I, I felt like it would be better instead of me having to lug a heavy instrument at home every day to practice. And ironically, choir, especially my high school choir, taught me way more music theory than band ever could. <laughs> so I chose to stick with it and just made vocal performance my main goal when it comes to embracing my passions for music. Serious. What other games do you play besides My Singing Monsters? Well, I'm definitely a mobile gamer, but overall a casual gamer throughout most platforms. I play quite a bit of Animal Crossing and Mario games. Big fan of Nintendo, they are my family. Some simulation and some management games collections of them. For a good while, I was also into Disney Infinity. I actually collected about 73 characters for it out of 130. And finally, I'm also a very big fan of decision-making games. You know, games that really make you think. Puzzle games, even. And yes, I did play Minecraft for a very good chunk of my middle school years, and I still kind of do with some friends every now and then. I don't really play it by myself the way I used to before, because back then I kind of gave myself health issues because I played it so much. What's your favorite type of music? I don't know, it kind of changes a lot very often. Currently, I'm really into the Broadway musical stuff right now. Y'all will very much see covers of some in the future. Most of the time, I enjoy listening to more acoustic, classical stuff instead of like hip-hop, rap, and other stuff that it's kind of monotone to me, you know? Music has to either have a meaning or make me feel something in order for me to like it. <laughs> what is slash are your favorite islands in MSM? And, uh, what cover are you proudest of? Well, uh, Water Island, Continent, definitely. As for my covers, uh... <laughs> Not those. I guess either my Water Island cover or my Sugarbush Island cover because I actually wasn't lazy on those. <laughs> Which monster do you find the most enjoyable to do an impression of? Well, I don't know if I really do impressions of them. I'm just trying to sing them the way I want to sing them. But I guess for monsters that I'm very good at is Furcorn and maybe Flumox. La 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 la. Kumbaya yo. Kumbayo. How did you find MSM? I found it in the app store like any other person would. I was playing a game called Four Picks One Word and then I got an advertisement for it and I'm like, Oh, this looks like a good game to pass my time. A week went by and then I ended up loving it and playing it all the time. My original account was on this Zoom Android tablet. I did bind the account, but I didn't remember the login for it. So whenever the tablet started getting old and wasn't responding to my fingers anymore,
anymore. Almost a year went by. To when I wasn't even playing the game, and eventually I contacted Big Blue Bubble, and they helped me get my account back. So now I'm continuing it on my phone. Have you ever taken singing classes, or did you teach yourself? Part of me thinks that I did not teach myself, and I the five years I had in choir helped me a little bit. But I did, of course, use my own research along the way through YouTube and maybe a couple of my friends. I'm still learning, definitely, to this day. I definitely did not take a quote-unquote singing class or had any vocal coaches, but I guess choir can count as a singing class. But you're singing with a group, so there's more to it than that. What are your favorite types of MSM videos to watch? Are there any specific MSM YouTubers are you are enjoy you enjoy watching? Hmm, well I do enjoy your videos, Mofix, but other than that I have not really explored that many MSM tuber content. <laughs> I'm getting kind of better exploring the community even more than I used to because even though I played the game I was very standoffish or I guess like distant from the community for some reason. I do remember watching a lot of like My Singing Monsters duets and like trios and like combining the monster sounds themselves. I am sure in the near future I will definitely be diving myself into the fandom even more than I have already. Serious. Would you consider making fan made islands, monster classes, etc? Honestly, I don't think so. Part of me feels like I'm not just yet creative enough to make a fan-made island or a fan-made element or class or all of that. I know a lot of the other MSM tubers make fan-made islands, but I'm secretly a nonconformist. Just kidding, but I do plan on learning how to animate, just not in the traditional way as how other MSM tubers do. We're just gonna have to wait and see in the future what I can do with MSM content, but I'm probably not gonna be an MSM tuber forever, but I'm definitely gonna try and expand my content and brand in more ways than one. What song do you find the most fun to sing? And finally, uh, uh, no, and also, well, I think that's about everything for tonight. Thank you guys so much for all of the lovely questions, and also just thank you for 1,000 subscribers. That's still blowing my mind to this day, and it's been about three or five weeks, I think. And also, thank you for just giving me a chance on YouTube. I know I'm not really meeting expectations, but like, that's just how it is when you're first starting out. So with that, please like and subscribe if you want to. And I will be going on vacation for a week, and once I'm back, I will hit y'all up with a little something special. Bye bye. Aww.